Good morning, lovely friends. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Oh my goodness, it's blowing a hooli out there today. Um, what a funny day. It's one of those days where I'm just not feeling it. I'm sure you all get those from time to time too. I'm just a bit sort of like, oh, pff, can't be bothered. I think it's because I've got so many jobs to do indoors. My to-do desk piles <laughs> are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I just can't get them out of the back of my mind and relax properly to be in the garden. So I basically thought to myself, you know what? We've got really high winds today. Um, we are due some rain too. So, leave the garden for today. I'm just going to swap my days around. I'm going to come to the garden again in a couple of days. Get this horrible amount of <laughs> stuff at home done and out of the way. So it's, it's just one of those things of get it off the desk, clear my mind so that when I am here, I can really be here and present. So if that's the case, why am I here? <laughs> because... Um, one of the things I need to do in the next couple of days is start some indoor sowings of my tomatoes and what else is due? Celery. I may actually just do those as soon as I get home now. But I didn't have any propagated trays or lids at home. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to come to the garden anyway to collect those. And while I'm here, I can just quickly just see how the garden's looking and actually it's lovely because a couple of my favourite ladies are down today so I've had a quick chat with them um, which has buoyed my mood somewhat not enough to make me stay and work in the garden all day I just need to do that indoor stuff Arr! so I thought because I'm coming down today anyway to pick up my trays and lids I need to pull them out now because I'll go home and I'll forget. Anyway, one of the other things I'm going to do today is make a potion to deal with a problem that I have every single year. And I know we all have it every single year. Slugs. <laughs> Bane of my life. Now, last year, once we got into about June or so, it wasn't too bad because we had drought the slugs weren't out and about and actually generally by June a, a lot of the plants were established enough to be able to take a little bit of slug attack and still survive when I did get the sluggings last year it was sort of around April and May time and I brought a lot of seedlings from home down here to go into the cold frame to harden off or just sit on the deck to harden off and my goodness, they got massacred, especially my lovely loofah, such a shame. So normally I use beer traps to deal with the slugs, but it gets really expensive. And I don't know exactly how much I spent on beer for the slugs last year, <laughs> never mind beer for me. Uh, I would rather not spend money on slug beer and spend that on beer for me. Because this year I am I am having to tighten my purse strings even further. So I'm going to try something that's not beer. Which I'll show you. First of all, I need to I'm just looking around this shed, it's an absolute dump again. How's it turn into a dump so quickly? So without further ado, I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up and then we're set up to make our little slug potion. Right, I've got all my bits and bobs ready. So, I just had a quick look online for um, a slug trap recipes that use yeast. Um, all sorts out there. I lighted on one where I thought, okay, I've got pretty much those ingredients apart from the yeast, because I don't, I never have time to make bread. So, I've been out and bought myself a packet of yeast. I don't know how far each packet's gonna go, but I'm absolutely convinced it's going to work out cheaper than beers, absolutely. So all I'm going to use is uh, some plain water that's just come out of our little standpipe on the allotment site. 
I've got my yeast ready. I didn't know which yeast to buy, um, but when I went to the supermarket, this is all they had. It's easy bake yeast. So um, let's just have one packet of that. So there's in that box, that box was six pound. Six pounds, it wasn't six pounds. So this one box was one pound. And within the box, there are six packets. Shame all the packaging really, but is it something to do with keeping it fresh? I'm not sure. So we'll see how far this goes. So I've got my water, I've got my yeast. I brought some flour from home. I do keep a bit of flour at home uh, for when I'm making pastry for pies. Mm. Oh. I want to go home and make a pie now. No, that's not on the agenda today. I don't have time. Bit of flour. And then the other thing is just some bog standard sugar. Now, I don't use sugar. <laughs> and I suddenly thought, oh, I'm going to have to go out and spend, I don't know, is that about a pound for a bag of sugar? I don't know. I don't buy it. But I went hunting it right in the back of my cupboard and found this. And um, I think I've had it, I don't know how long I've had it, but... I've obviously had it in for if I've got visitors over who want sugar in their tea. I'm just looking to see if there's a use-by date. Does sugar have a use-by date? I don't know. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that slugs aren't bothered about use-by dates. Okay, so let's put it together. Well, the recipe calls for... Um, Right, hang on, let me, let me do the glug, glug, glug first. I'm going to one litre. So the recipe I found was um, per cup. Now a cup is about 250 mils. So this is now going to be the equivalent of four cups. I didn't want to do just one cup because I want to put out a couple of traps today. So for each cup of water, I'm going to add one teaspoon of sugar so because this is four cups I shall add one two three four of sugar I'm now suddenly thinking maybe I should have had put all the dry ingredients in first ah am I going to get a claggy mess I might do again will the slugs mind a claggy mess so that's one cup, one teaspoon. Same for this, one teaspoon of flour. So because I'm doing four cups, I shall do four teaspoons. One, oh, I'm going to have to whisk this. Two, three, four. Yes, I think it would have been better to mix all the dry ingredients first. Let's see if we can get that. Come on, mix, mix. <laughs> Um, okay, note to self. I'm going to make another batch in a minute. I'm going to start with dry ingredients. Oh, I'm going to be here all day with that. Okay, so that's the, the water, the sugar, the flour. Now for each cup of water, I'm told to add half a teaspoon of yeast. So for four cups, that's going to be two teaspoons, which looks like that's one, that's two. So it looks like each of these little individual packets is going to hold about three teaspoons. So, oh, I can hear that wind whipping around outside. Yeah, dry ingredients first, Vivi. Baking 101, isn't it? Oops, sloshing. Right, I'm going to carry on stirring for a little while. You go and do something more interesting while I do this. And then we'll go and get it into the garden. Just before I go into the garden, I'm going to talk about where I'm going to place the traps on my rationale, purely because it's so windy out there today. I don't think you're going to hear a word. <coughs> so, the first trap is going to go next to the compost bins by the Taunton Dean Kale. Firstly, um, I did have slug damage on the Taunton Dean Kale over this winter, so I know there has been slug activity there. 
Now, the other thing is obviously where the compost bins are, where I've got the deck, there's lots of sort of shady areas or damp areas. They're just lovely, perfect, delicious hideouts for slugs. So that will be my first place, which I think is a smart idea. My second place is I'm going to, the first things I'm going to put in the ground soon are my potatoes. So I'm going to put a trap where I'm going to start, actually I was going to dig my potato trenches today, that was one of my jobs, but it's too windy, all that material is going to go flying. But I will put one near where I'm going to do my potato trenches, see if I can lure some out. And then the final one is going to go right in the top bed um, where I've got the last of my brassicas still because uh, pretty much every cabbage I take home has got some protein in it, shall we say. So there's some slug activity in that bed, obviously. It makes sense because those are the beds that have still got bits and pieces of food in, in terms of my greens and greens for them uh, so yeah the idea of doing it now is I can't afford nematodes can't afford nematodes certainly not but if I start trapping now hopefully I'm going to be as much as possible luring them out now getting them now before way before I even start to bring seedlings down here or start to do any direct sowing so I'll have seedlings coming up in the garden that's the theory. Let's see if it works. More than anything, let's see if this potion will attract them enough for me to be able to quit using the beer. Oh, so windy. Can you hear me, mother? Now, I never sink my slug traps. I'm never bothered, but I think I'm gonna park it under the um, grapevine a little bit just to stop it blowing away. Oh, it doesn't look very appetising, does it? <laughs> right, that's one done. Let's go and do the uh, cabbage bed. Oh, crikey, it really is blowy today. I think we'll have to bury this one. Okay, so it looks like, in terms of quantities, four cups is going to equal two traps for me. So, I better go and make up another little batch. Half the amount this time, because I only need to fill one more trap. Okay, good job. Come on, sluggies, drink up.
<laughs> Sitting on my bin. Can you hear me over this wind? No idea. So I'm just starting to bring the flint corn over to my deck area. This took us, it's way too windy. Um, I think we might need to go back in the shed. It's a shame it's so bright. Ah! Let's go back in the shed. What I was trying to say <laughs> before the wind so rudely interrupted me, I've got to say it's gorgeous out there today. So I'm going to do a couple of little jobs before I head back and do all that stuff at home. Anyway. What I was trying to say about the flint corn is that it's obviously dead as a dodo, it's brown, it's dry. So what I'm going to try and do this year, um, I made myself a little promise a couple of years ago that I would start to be more religious about chopping my compost down, chopping my waste down into smaller pieces to help it compost more quickly. And I've been quite good at that. Um, just give me a second, one of my friends has turned up. Hang on, sorry about that. It, oh, it's so lovely at this time of year. So many folk are coming back to their gardens, lovely. So I've just had another little quick catch up. So much for coming down here for two minutes. Anyway, what I was trying to say about the flint corn and compost in general. So a couple of years ago, I said to myself, Vivi, you need to chop up all your waste material smaller so that it composts more quickly. And I've been quite good about that. One thing I'm really rubbish about is turning my pile. So that's sort of this year's resolution for the garden. So what I'm going to do, if you remember I've got two compost bins at the moment. I've got the square one and I've got the big round one, the Dalek. Now one of the other things with making compost is quite often, especially through the summer months, it's all very much green stuff that's going in there. And then over winter, it's all very much brown. So what I thought I'd do, probably, I might do it today actually, because even though it's blowing, it's actually really like quite a nice refreshing day. And that stuff can wait. So um, what I'm thinking with all the flint corn is to chop it up quite small and put it in my big round Dalek bin. Bear with me. Likewise, any of the other sort of brown, really dry rubbish that's around the plot at the moment. And then, as we go into spring and summer, and I'm generating green waste, what I can do is, if I've got my, so I've got my green waste in the wheelbarrow ready to be put into the compost bin, is to grab a handful, or maybe sort of about 40-60, so 60% green, 40% brown. So grab a handful of that brown stuff mix it in with my green before I put it in the compost bin and I'm hoping that way first I'll get some good compost secondly I'll get it maybe a bit quicker than I have in the past and thirdly it's a good way of getting rid of all that that brown stuff without it just sitting in the bottom of the compost bin doing nothing for a year so that's the plan and what I'm thinking as well is where I've put compost on some of the beds over winter just as a mulch to cover them against the rain <coughs> excuse me I knew it wasn't going to compost down completely it's only had you know four or five months in most cases um, as I need those beds as I need to uncover those beds because that material is too I can't plant through it at the moment what I'm thinking is is to rake that material off any of it that's still really brown, chop it up and put it in my brown bin. Any of it that has composted down nicely, I'll just leave it on the soil for the worms to take in. Yay! And uh, so I'm, I'm thinking that over the course of the next month to two months, as I open up more and more of the beds, I will fill that Dalek bin with all the brown waste that hasn't composted over winter. 
and just keep adding it to any green waste I generate over the summer. That's the plan. Let's see how it works. It should work out okay. Anyway, do you know what? Considering my mental state an hour and a half, two hours ago when I arrived of, oh, call me really wasn't up for it. The brightness, that stiff breeze, the fresh air, the company and the chat of fellow plotters. It's proper put a spring back in my step. Yay! So I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to be sensible because that stuff is in the back of my mind still, all that stuff that's at home that's nagging me. I think what I'm going to do is use this wonderful energy, the garden, the weather, the friends have given me, race off home and I'm going to attack those piles of to-do and get them done and out the way so then I have more time to play in the garden this coming week. Yay! So, on that note, I shall bid you all a very fond farewell. Only for a little while, I'll see you again soon all sorts of things to get done over the next two weeks so uh, <laughs> you might be seeing a lot of me you'd be sick of me by the end of March I'm sure anyway for now it's cheerio take care of yourselves have fun whatever you're getting up to let that wind blow away the cobwebs if you've got some wind too I'll see you soon take care <laughs>